Hey, what's going on guys? Hope everyone's doing really, really well. This is probably one of the last videos I can make outside just because it's getting a little colder. Found this cool little hallway in the mall. The restaurant hasn't opened yet, so I'm just sitting outside in the patio, but there's a lot of people sound, but I think there's not so much wind sound, so we should be okay for this video. A few months ago, I made this video about Google versus Amazon. Facebook this big company video where I compare to contrast the you know the culture the general persona of each of these companies but <clears throat> somebody asked me in the comment of that video and also I got a couple emails asking have I ever interviewed at those companies and the answer is yes I have so this video I'm going to talk about a very recent experience of me interviewing and getting rejected by Amazon just this past year in 2017. So no serious lessons in this video, just a little bit of storytelling and hopefully it's helpful. Before we get going on this, I need to give a little bit of a backstory of why was I even looking for a job? Was I in between? What was happening in 2017? Well, the start of 2017, I was still working at a startup and obviously since then I've left and let's just talk about the various reasons somebody might leave a company so there's a lot of reasons you might leave a company one it's you're just upset there's another opportunity uh, maybe there's reasons outside your control maybe there's family reasons maybe you have like personal reasons why you got to leave the company but for whatever reason you're never gonna stay at a company forever right we, are, we already talked about this people grow companies grow and you're not gonna stay for too long if you do congratulations the thing that happened with the startup was they decided to actually move the headquarters to a whole different city and that's a really serious decision for any company small or big to make right think about if you're working someplace and all of a sudden they tell you you gotta move what if you have like a family a mortgage like a lot of roots in the city you live and all of a sudden the company also something very important to you asks you to just move cities that's a pretty big deal right so you guys have the picture this is now like mid 2017 now the company i was working at has decided to move cities huge decision and what am i going to do i decided to stay and look for new opportunities in new york city so i want to stay here for now and to live here you do need some kind of income or else you just can't survive in the city so i decided to look for new opportunities in new york city and at the time to be perfectly honest with everyone i was a little i wasn't burned out burned out per se but I was a little tired from doing the startup grind it's definitely a lot of hours I was looking for something a little more stable like a bigger more well-established company and something where I could just actually chill a little bit more make a little more money and like I shall have also have like a nice name to it and what kind of fits those categories but it's all the brand name companies right so all this information I'm going to share about the Amazon interview process, whatnot, it's all public knowledge and I encourage everyone to just go online, Google for this stuff and it's all there. One really helpful site is glassdoor.com. You can find real salary averages per company, per position, reviews from ex-employees, current employees, and also they give you like little hints of what the interview process is like. I'm not going to give any super details away in case anybody watches this video and bans me for life, but you know, everything we talk about, you can find it on the internet. Before we get into Amazon, I can talk about Google a little bit. I applied for Google uh, two and a half times. I like to call it Instead of three, I call it two and a half to make myself feel a little better. In college, I applied, didn't even get an interview. I think maybe my resume wasn't good or they, did, they didn't like the way I looked or something like that. But college, tried to apply, did not even get recognized. Uh, a couple years of working, I also tried to apply for Google again. They actually called me back and I got a phone interview with them. Didn't pass the phone interview. It's okay. Um, and the most recent time was this. 2017 just earlier this year when I was kind of studying I also applied for Google again they recognized me right away like oh we see you applied eight years ago and then five years ago you're back so I did one round of phone interviews and I got a maybe and they wanted to do another one with me I got a second second different person phone interview but after that just I guess I got another no so it didn't even make it to the on-site Google and <clears throat> you know probably could have studied better but that's my Google story but the topic of this video is going to be the Amazon story so around the same time of failing at Google I was still in the mode of studying for interviews everyone knows that study mode right so I was studying for interviews and also got called from Amazon did the phone interview did pretty well on that question and I got invited for an on-site interview 
at Amazon. So I was pretty stoked about that at the time. One thing that I can say that stood out with Amazon from, from right off the bat is that their recruiters were very, very good recruiters. And you can't say that about a lot of companies. I have, I, I interviewed for a handful of companies. I'm not going to name them here because you guys don't care about them. But one thing that you can differentiate is how the recruiters treat you. Do they treat you with respect? Are they patient with you? Do they push you? All that stuff. One example is I had one really, really terrible experience with one recruiter at a different company and I completely took that company off the list. I got really, really far with the company, even like verbal offer level far, but the recruiter was just being a jerk to me. Like, you know, you never answer the question of what is your salary range, but you know, screw it. I answered the question like I'm expecting a salary range between this and this. Told the recruiter that the first thing she told me right to my face is like, based on your skills, you don't deserve to be in that range. And she said it just like that. I'm like, I'm done with that company. So anyways, it's a bad story. It's not a story for this video, but Amazon got the on-site interview happy and now it's time to prepare as best I can for the interview. So what did I do? To prepare, you guys probably already know this, you're gonna have to prepare and be ready to answer technical coding questions in real time with someone else, right? And personally, I'm not so good at those coding questions. I think I'm probably about a C or a C plus on average, but if I study really hard, I kind of get to like a B minus or a B or maybe even a B plus. Some days I'm on, some days I'm off, but I'm not particularly good at a lot of these technical interviewing questions. I get nervous, choke up a lot. That's why I kind of failed the Google's one, but failed the Google one, but sometimes I'm on. and. For those questions like that, you know, you just have on and off days, but really it's a matter of preparation. And I was trying my best at the time to prepare for the technical interviewing questions, but honestly, I'm not too good at the whiteboarding stuff. The one major thing that I read about Amazon and also what my friends told me about the Amazon interview is that it's highly, highly behavioral, which is very different from your normal technical interview. So one thing that you guys have probably heard about is that Amazon has this thing called the 14 leadership principles. And my first interaction with a recruiter, they already introduced these 14 leadership principles. And apparently it's like the Bible with every single employee at the whole company. And the first thing she told me to do to prepare, not just a recruiter, my friends told me to do it, Glassdoor told me to do it. But first, what you have to do is you have to pretty much memorize all 14 of these leadership principles and you have to behave, you have to prepare a lot for the behavioral questions. So what my friend told me to do to prepare for them is you list down and memorize all 14 of those behavioral traits. And for each one of those traits, you think of two examples in your career or professional life that can back up one of those leadership principles. So you pretty much out of all your experiences, you need to come up with like 14 times two, like 28 different experiences to showcase how you match these 14 leadership things. So that was pretty crazy. I never heard of a company, you know, focusing on behavioral stuff that much. Usually when you're interviewing for a software developer job, they just test you on your coding, make sure you're not an asshole and you'll be set. But I was kind of worried for Amazon because I had to study both technical stuff and a lot of these behavioral questions. So I was a little stressed. I was a little stressed about that. So one mistake I made when I was interviewing for Amazon was that I spent a little too much time, I think, focused on the behavioral stuff and I kind of let my technical interviewing skills like slip a little bit because I was so focused on answering those behavioral questions right, trying to showcase those principles that I kind of didn't practice enough and like fine tune my coding skills. When the on-site interview came, this was about the format. There was about five, I think it was six with a lunch interview or something, but the one different thing about the Amazon on-site interview is that they spend equal amount of time asking you technical questions and behavioral questions. So for most engineers out there, if you interview, you know that the majority of your interviews, interviews are going to be technical. But for every single on-site Amazon interview, each interview is split exactly 50-50 between coding, technical, and 50 with behavioral stuff. So when the on-site came, all those interviews, the full day, but I answered all the leadership questions pretty well. I had great examples. I memorized it. I recited it. I spoke to myself in a mirror for all those questions, but the coding ones, I really didn't do a really good job with. And I think that's why I didn't get the offer because all the coding questions, they weren't too hard. They're pretty standard coding questions, but sometimes in the heat of the interview, you kind of like choke up and just 
can't answer the questions like as if you're doing it at home, right? So one thing led to another. Long story short was that I didn't get the offer after the onsite interview because I don't think I nailed the coding questions well enough. And to be honest, a lot of it is uh, preparation, but it was just an off day for me. Like I, I was interviewing a lot at the at that time, and some days I felt really on. Like I would like be on an onsite interview. I would just like be nailing some of the interview questions. But the other day, some other days, like this Amazon day, I was just off. And it's not that the questions are any harder. They're just like the same questions, but sometimes you just kind of think yourself to death and you know, you just have a bad day. But you know, it is what it is. When I got the rejection from them on the phone, I was definitely a little upset because I had studied pretty, pretty hard for those interviews. But what can you do, right? For a company like Amazon, Google, Facebook, they can be so, so selective with their process because imagine how many engineers want to work at those companies. They're like, they must have a backlog of highly, highly qualified engineers. They can be, they can afford to be really, really picky with who they choose. So, you know, I had a bad day, maybe like a worse engineer than me had a good day and got in, or maybe I'm just, you know, not qualified to work there, who knows. But last thing I want to talk about regarding applying to these big companies like Google, Amazon, Facebook is the pedigree, the brand, the reputation. This is even more important to some people than money sometimes because when you say you've worked at some of these big companies before, it lasts with you forever. Like recruiters will filter on LinkedIn by people that have only worked at Amazon or people that have only worked at Google. And if you've worked at those companies, it automatically puts you a little bit of a higher reputation level than other developers. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap up the video here. Don't really have a moral of the story for this video. If I could name a couple lessons, it's just, Relax when you interview a little bit. You're gonna have some good days. You're gonna have some bad days. Maybe you have a bad interviewer. Maybe a lot of things could just be outside your control. Like I think back back when I interviewed at Google, when I, long time ago, I think this was like 2012 or something, like five, four or five years ago. But I had some like crazy Russian guy give me this crazy algorithm problem on the phone. I could barely understand him. I was trying to be polite and I just, I bombed that interview. Like I know I bombed that interview, but some days, you might have a good day, some days you have a bad day, just let them all slide and it's all good. So that's it for the video. That's the story of how I got interviewed, or how I interviewed and got rejected by Amazon just recently this year. Hopefully you guys, everyone watching, you should also try to apply it to all those big companies. Just try it out, you know, it doesn't hurt. It's good experience and the, what's the worst thing that can happen? The worst thing that can happen is you just get rejected and you can, come to the rejection pile like the rest of us. But hopefully this experience, this experience sharing was helpful for anyone. If you have any specific questions on what happened, my thoughts, why I did it again, just ask me in the comments. I'm happy to answer any of those things and hopefully the story is helpful. All right, like the video, share the video, all the good stuff and hope everyone has a great rest of the week.